Welcome to the Arlanders Podcast. Arlanders Podcast is here to shed light on all things business in the outdoors. My name is Jaime, and I'm with my good amigo Kingston. What's up, guys? Hola, dude. We're back at it. It's good to hear your voice, man. All right. You look good. Got a Roman Law sweatshirt. Which will be, Got it's available on, it. on, it is actually. You no, can, it's not available You on took the all that shit down? Yep. Damn. So, if you want one, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, or let me know, because we print them here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> good point. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I think, uh, man, I, think, I, mean, I, I got, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it, I have mixed feelings on merch. creating product because it's like, well, do people even want it? And then, well, you should just do Instagram polls. Do you want more roaming loss merch? And if you get a lot of yeses versus noes, yeah, then do it. Yeah, we print to order. Good point. Yep, but. Whatever. Until then, I'm going to wear this uh, sweet sweatshirt that I have. Custom one of one. Right here, custom. The best one we did was a tiger camo that I printed crooked. Yeah. You were so bummed. Yeah, I didn't even use any of those photos. I think you threw it away, and you just hated me ever since. No, I just let uh, Bodhi use it. Keep oh, it. Did you? Yeah. Nice. But anyways. So we, we just went on live, if you guys tuned in a little bit ago, and uh, just asking for some podcast topics, you know? Yeah, we got a good one. We did. We haven't done this one in a while, like a story time. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, the the uh, trail together said, do you know his real name? Uh, yeah, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy said, uh, you know, talk about a trip that didn't go so great, um, which is basically what happened to like Oregon, um, if you haven't listened to that one yet. Yeah. But uh, but. Yeah, we want to talk about a trip that we did up north. Because um, these uh, like they're learning experiences. Yeah, so learn, he was learning like, experiences. Yes. What hard trips have you been on that actually have served you better in the long run because you've learned something that you didn't know before? Yeah. Which is everything. That learning experiences are everything. Totally. Yeah, so, so we let's went, kick it off. We went on a trip uh, up north and um, basically we were there for actually for a project of mine mm -hmm. um, and we were shooting um, something ac actually of me. We're, we're shooting the, uh, um, the watches, the mm -hmm. Roman lost watches. So, um, and so we got, I think, well, we got down there to the spot and, um, I believe it was nice when, no, it was, super it nice, was like it. nice when we got there and then, um, something that could have gone wrong, um, was that the, the rain started rolling in and this was early, early, when we lost track, like, uh, the rebel, um, stages. So just had the bed rack and, um, front runner tent and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, we, you know, had open bed and like my fridge and all this stuff. And like, one of the things that I remember is you bringing that pop top. <laughs> yeah. The, and it was a legitimate, just easy up orange, it's easy so up. belligerent, but, and, uh, if we didn't bring that would have, that would have been a pretty brutal mistake. Um, cause everything would have been so wet Yeah, and we wouldn't have had anywhere to hang out in between like the, the dry, the dry spots. Yeah. Speaking so. of wet liquid death, I just put it in my mouth right now. <laughs> Okay. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, but that's um, a good learning experience because yeah. now you have your um, manta ray. Is that what it's called, manta? Yeah, the 270. Yeah. And that thing so having, is full coverage. Basically, what I'm trying to say is having something that yeah will cover you in inclement weather. Mm -hmm. Super key. Yeah, but man. Like having that that awning just and not even for like rain, but like for you know just sunshade. Mm -hmm. Holy. It's just so, so useful. Gear protection. Cause if you have your moto and you, I mean, you can yep. leave your moto in the rain or like really hot sun, but it's nice if you have, like I have my awning and then the tent that flips out that also creates a rear awning too. Yeah. But the moto just sits under the awning. Cause I don't really like when it's just sitting in baking heat, you know? Yeah. You can, um, like in Oregon, you could like, well, I remember mm -hmm. it being raining and you would just lower the awning at the lowest point and it would just the rain would just come right off and wouldn't yep. even touch uh the bike or anything underneath the husky yeah but uh i mean that's that's the case that's been the case for um many many trips not Big just time. oregon but just like all, all kinds of any trip that has rain and we have the bike yep you just yeah you use the awning in that way and 
you keep your you keep your bike dry. That's a good one. I like it because it's you. I feel like there's always that one aspect where you don't think of going to these locations and first thought is shade. Like oh, you're just yeah. going, I want to go to the location because it's going to be epic. But then once you're there, it's like, damn, having some form of coverage, shade that you can control, not having to deal on the actual location specifically is huge. Yeah, the the um, the shade and then coming from SoCal where there's like hardly any weather. Yeah. Because you're not even thinking about it. I no. mean, of course, you should be checking weather and stuff. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like when you leave like a sunny Southern California and you're like, oh, there's like rain six hours north. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you, you got to you got to be prepared for that. And the uh, the uh, another thing that I for, I definitely forgot where it was just like rain gear in general. No, no rain jacket, no rain, like no, rain pants, boots, huh? no, no waterproof boots on yeah. that trip. Um, and then like same with like cat, like she was on that trip and she didn't have anything. It was just like. Yeah, definitely a big, big learning one. Yeah, that's good. I like it. And it, and at the end of the day, like the trip wasn't ruined no. at all. But it, you can tell the next time you would go to that same location, you would know what to bring. And then the trip experience would just be like that much better. Yeah, I think every trip you, I mean, like, we, yeah, we've said it before, but like every trip you learn something, something. Yeah. Like even if it's something small, like, you know, by all means, like you're going to learn something. Yeah. That's okay. So that, that I like that one. Yeah. I'm like laughing to myself right now because the <laughs> next one is like silly. And we've talked about this one too. But so this one was like a big aha moment for recovery gear. Yeah. And uh, this one, it was, I didn't go with you oh, on this trip. You talk about that. You talk about that in the, the video oh, that we are going to be releasing. I know. Yeah. I'll okay. give you, I mean, they might as well just say it again. But that made yeah. me remember it when we were talking about why it was an aha moment to even have recovery gear. But we're off-roading. It was kind of like the last day of the trip. And so we were like, let's let's go hit some trails and push it a little bit more than I probably should have on, on a lot of these trails. Keep in mind, he has two-wheel drive. Two, well, and then I didn't have any recovery boards. We had no recovery straps. We're with a truck that's a lot smaller than mine, too. No winches. No winches. And uh, so kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Seed or seat? We had, I think we had uh, Max tracks, but it wouldn't have done anything in that. No, you weren't this. on this trip. Oh. This is a different trip. Okay. I, I mean, thought we were talking about... Uh, the, fact that I, the fact that I didn't get it after our trip and then I went again oh, and that the was same so that, shit happened. Okay. All right. Let's hear it. These are some <laughs> stupid aha moments where I'm like, what am I thinking? All right. So um, here I go. We're sending it trail, super fun. The truck can handle if you, you know, like how to maneuver it properly. But as soon as you hit scenarios of like incredibly loose, loose, soft sand, um, you're just asking for trouble, I would say. And that's sure enough what we did. Little truck made it, barely made it up this hill. And so it was my turn. And I, and I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I'm like, I'm going to try it, you know, like push the truck, see how, it, if it can handle and as soon as it hit that bottom to go up, it just started digging itself. And I was like, shoot, like that's not good. And it was at the bottom of this ravine, essentially. So you would go down the hill, touch bottom, incredibly loose, deep, soft sand. And then you'd have to climb the other hill on the other side. So I got stuck at the, essentially almost at the base of the, the hill where I'm going up. And at this point, I'm stuck. And, you know, you're trying to rock the truck out. You're trying to push the truck. You're trying to do all these different things to get yourself out of the scenario. It's kind of like that fight or flight mentality when you're in those situations. And um, we miraculously got out, but it took hours. And here's where the big kicker was of having the proper gear would have made it that much easier because we didn't have shovels. So we're digging these, sh we're digging with our hands, which is ridiculous. We didn't have toe straps. And we're with, we're climbing out in the Sierras. So we used, um, climbing rope, which was incredibly strong. And we were able to tie off between the little truck and my truck, this incredible apparatus that the, the boys knew how to do. Cause they know all the knots and stuff. And we didn't have max track. So we're just essentially doing tug motions to get out and then digging tug, dig, tug, dig, tug. And it, this was literally the, the way to get out. But if we would have had a simple recovery strap, max tracks, shovels, 
we would have it would have cut that whole scenario in half. Yeah. On top of that, obviously, if I have four wheel drive now, that oh, this whole scenario probably would have not happened. Yeah. But it's just those learning curves where like I'm not in the business of getting myself a brand new truck right now. So with with the vehicle that I have, buying those simple things would have made that trip so much or that whole scenario so much easier. Now, is it a good memory? I thought, I mean, looking back on it, we'll always talk about that memory. The fact that that rope didn't break and the fact that our hands yeah. were just like, it was so hot too, dude. <laughs> and we we're all wearing like sandals and shit. Cause it was just like a random, like, let's just send it and like have some fun from camp. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So it was, it was like, uh, I mean, it's like, yeah, you'll always remember. And then, but it's funny cause it's like, you won't, how are you supposed to know what you need? until something happens yeah that's i mean unless you do inc like a, all the research in the world but like like how how do like this is what um i think is like tough in this industry it's like um all these new people coming in and it's mm -hmm. like i mean i guess like how how would they how would they learn without doing it kind of sucks because then it's like you might get yourself in like a position that you you know you, you don't want to be in yeah but um but how yeah, do you know of, until you go kind yeah, of vibe yeah i don't know i don't know how you would combat that yeah and it kind of sucks yeah it sucks for the new people because it's like you're gonna learn the hard way i guess <laughs> i don't know because you, you could buy i mean it's like anything like you know the, the guys that have everything before yeah. even going yeah and then they only they barely even use it so i'm like damn i mean if you can buy it buy it yeah there's nothing the wrong with it but it's just funny when people just go ahead and spend everything and then really never use it to the full potential. Like I'd rather send it on what I have and then be like, oh shit, I should probably get this afterwards. Yeah. Versus just like being too cautious and just like never doing those things. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you have a winch, it's like, damn. Man, a winch know. would have made it so easy to get out of that thing. But that's what I'm saying. Like, damn. If you had one, you would be like, all right. Well, and they're expensive, right? And, uh, and so like you're like damn i'm gonna spend all this money on a, a so, so something that you might not even use but then yeah. it's like that one time you use it you're like damn it paid it paid for yourself itself yeah. like it's totally worth it because the if the if you didn't get out the way that you did you would have had to pay someone to get you out and that would have been very expensive it probably would have been expensive I don't, that was what i was freaking out because we were going at the end of the day <laughs> and the sun was setting behind the sierras and so we got out, like we hit the the road to get out. We essentially hit the road when it was dark. So like we had spent multiple hours as the yeah. sun was setting and my anxiety was just through the roof. I was trying to keep it cool, but I was like, fuck it. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah. I, I had like a, when I had the Montero, when we were snow, we were like doing some snow wheeling kind of things uh -huh. in, in Mammoth. And um, it was the first and, and like, I think the only time I used the winch but going up a hill, it, it like didn't make it all the way. So it started like coming <laughs> down and then sliding to the uh -oh. right or le or the front end started sliding to the right. So, you know, you're coming down the hill sideways uh -huh. and basically, you know, if it's steep enough and you catch something, you can basically flip your truck pretty easily. <laughs> so scary. So we basically winched the truck back for back the nose of it forward uh -huh. um, or, you know, so I could roll down the hill, you know, straight. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that was super scary. But I, if I didn't have that winch, really, I, I, don't, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you how that would have played out. Probably not good. Also, yeah. snow. Snow is scary. Yeah, snow is, snow is definitely not the most fun thing to... Especially snow and hills. Yeah. yeah. Don't mix well. But um, so it's fun to blast around in. You just can't, like, the buddy Sam that we were camping with the other night, or he came out to yeah. shoot photos. He has a Land Cruiser with lockers, for four wheel driving. He got, he said, the moment I've gotten stuck in snow, I didn't have max tracks. He bought max tracks after. It's because it was, it snowed, froze, and then snowed again. Oh, so yeah. he was just sliding on ice. And he says that's the only time that Land Cruiser has been stuck. But yeah, snow, you just can't see what's underneath you. Yeah, that's the, you kind of have to figure out, um, if you're not familiar with like snow and, and like the, you know, under layers freezing, that definitely catch you off guard. That's scary. If it's fresh snow, it's great. Yeah. It's but super if it's, fun, huh? but if it's, it's like late in the season and then there's for sure a layer of ice somewhere underneath that snow sliding. Yeah. All so, right. So yeah. that's, that's mine for maybe, um, 
you know, pushing the boundary, which I'm, I feel like I do way too often with that truck. Yeah. Um, and then knowing what gear to buy afterwards. What was yours essentially? Like knowing, like preparing like for preparing for weather. Yeah. Yeah. And like inclement weather and um, sun and protecting your stuff. Another one. Another one. Let's hear it. Another one. Well, the other one was the winch with the Montero. What? Yeah. Because if I didn't, like, again, if I didn't have that winch, I don't think that Montero would have lasted. God, that little, you put, you put a lot of, um, a lot of stuff on the Montero. And I feel like, yeah, the winch you talked about, the, you did tires. I think, I think everything on the, on the Montero was actually ended up being used, which was nice. Yeah. Cause you, it was like, all right, this build was like actually used in the way that, you know, I wanted to use it. Yeah. And yeah. It was cool. I, I love like that it. car. Um, if you've listened to this, that episode we did, I think it was like episode three, but story time, Oregon, Oregon or bust. Another really big realization. It's the, the moment you have that thing in the back of your mind, which is I should, uh, I'll, I might get away with this gear or yeah. I know I should have bought it, but mm, it should be fine. You're going to kick yourself in the ass later. Cause that's what happened with my camper shell on the, with having the moto and not, not knowing or not really um, coming to the realization that I should have just bought the right shit from the big get-go yeah. for the straps. I think, I think the number one thing that most people don't want to buy are max tracks. Yeah. They are very expensive. But they're so but, fucking useful. But they useful. work so well. Yeah. And, and you can get the cheap ones and they'll be one-time use maybe or two-time use. Um, they're just made out of... I don't know what makes max tracks so good like the compound of plastic they use or whatever, like just lasts like just so much longer. Yeah. Way more durable. Um, but well, there's other, there's go treads, I think that are also pretty gnarly, like, um, durability wise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, so maybe, maybe that's like hinting back to like the strap scenario. So the, that's a, that's a, that's a big one too. That's a big one. Is that the straps? Yeah. But, um, yeah, on the moto, you know, like even knowing, putting myself in that scenario where we were so bummed when the, the, when the moto went through the back window and shattered the, <laughs> the camper shell. Yeah. Like at that moment we got it fixed and the trip was like, whew, we were elated. We're back. On, we're back, back. On the boys are stoked. Kingston's like, God damn, I'm like, sorry, super Pacific. First time I met super Pacific and shook their hand. I'm like, can you fix my camper shell? And they're like, <laughs> I don't work on Lear. And I was like, ah. Uh, hooked it up and I should have bought the right straps at that moment. And it happened again. Oh, we're and talking I, ratchet straps. Yeah. The ratchet the straps. The, and the, so the, the reason dumb. why the ratchet straps didn't work are because the, the hook to it was too short. Yeah. And if you're familiar with freaking ratchet straps, I guess, um, it was just like this, like little nubby, um, like Edge. hook and, uh, the ones that you needed were like those longer ones that really, you know, kind hooked of around. hooked around and yeah. up and around. Um, otherwise it would have been fine. I think, I think so. But now, but now, well, you can say, but now you run the, the safety straps and yeah. all that. So I do, I've, I've been in the market. I should probably just buy a new, uh, racks, like a mount, mount rack. I have the one I got. Oh, you need a new motor rack in, in general. Yeah. yeah. That thing is just jank. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But I see what I do. I always push the limit with the shit I have. And yeah. then when shit goes bad, I'm always like such an idiot. Like why did I just push the limit so hard? Yeah. I mean, the uh, <laughs> what's learned. funny about it is that <clears throat> it comes down to uh, paying for stuff, right? It's like you're either going to pay for a new window, right? <laughs> Which is probably the same amount of money <laughs> as like a freaking rack. Yeah. Or you can buy the rack and not have to deal with the not only the the cost of the window, but the time spent fixing the window. Yep. Because you're going to have, I mean, it puts you out like, okay, now you have pl- a plexiglass window that broke again. Which was expensive twice. to start with. Yeah. And then, and then you had to go home and you're in Oregon. It's like, you're not fixing the window in anyways. Yeah. So you got to go home and then get it repaired again. And then that's another cost. It's yeah. like, you're you're almost like over the amount of a really nice rack. Yeah, the like the rack you have. Is, yeah, uh, what is that one called? Ra- the rack and ride. That one's so, very nice. Uh, by far the best one I've had. So and far. you, that's your fourth rack. 
Yeah, I think so. You did Cycle Gear, then you did Moto Jacks, then you did the Moto Rack or Moto something. I did the uh, Edge Moto Rack, Edge. and I did the uh, Switch Hauler. Yep. And then, yeah, the, the cheap Cycle Gear one. And then now I'm on the Rack and Ride. And that's your favorite one so far. That's definitely the best one. I mean, most expensive one. <laughs> yeah. But again, like, I, the reason, I, I mean, most of the time, the reason why things are expensive is because they freaking work. Yeah, they're so, made well. Um, so let's, I'll, I'll put that as mine, like a buy one, cry once mentality. Like it's something yeah, I think that's going on one. these trips more and more. It's like, I could have easily taken the time and returned those straps or just said, screw it. I mean, it would cost me probably like what, 15 bucks. And I could have went and bought another set of nice ratchet straps for 30 bucks and been stoked. Yeah, because we, uh, I think we ended up buying, you ended up buying <laughs> straps of cycle gear, like way, like way after it all happened. <sighs> because you broke the window the second time and then you I were convinced. I PTSD from that shit, dude. And then you were convinced to buy straps. When you went on this trip to Big Bear, man, I was driving so slow. I, I know. And your rack is just so all over the place. <laughs> I'm like, damn, no wonder his fucking shit goes through his window. <laughs> It's like I'm crazy. like literally even on the road when I have because like, the airbags kind of make it bouncy, and oh, you don't man. have like a you don't have like an anti wobble on it. It's just a hitch pin holding this thing in. <laughs> and it's like wow, you're really you're really betting on uh, that rack there. Oh, send it <laughs> always um, pushing my limits, dude. All right, let me hear one from you. Give me give me some in depth, hmm, almost broke you down mentality. You know well. I don't know. Like it's, it's not, it's not super in depth, but some small things are always forgetting something like camera gear or yeah. just stupid shit like that uh -huh. always happens. Like really I should be making a checklist and just doing it every, every time. But yeah. um, one, one thing that I was trying to um, curb the problems of was the, with the moto the and, and like, putting all the like the protection type stuff on okay because i i learned that if yeah it's like i i at this point i am failing at riding dirt bikes really bad well but, you know it's not that he sucks it's that he just doesn't go well yeah and it's like I, well i didn't have my truck for a uh, month and like stuff like that it's just like yeah i and that in i don't have a, another vehicle to take it you know i could just you know what I've been seeing is people just renting U-Haul trucks. That's the shit. People do it all the time. And then just using them for dirt bike. Yeah. Dirt bike hauler. Anyways. You can't, you can't haul a freaking... I mean, we can haul it with my truck, actually. I have the tow package on my truck. No, like the, the fucking the ones <laughs> that you bring it in. <laughs> like, like literally the U-Haul truck? Yeah. <laughs> like a U-Haul, like either a That's truck a or a, one of the vans. <laughs> and they're 20 bucks. That's it? Yeah. For how long? For for twenty four hours, I think. Oh man! So it's like, yeah, you can take. Anyways, side track, but but you're saying like um, the moto shit you put on there? Yeah, like all the protective stuff. It's like I, I just didn't want to like damage um, things, you know, riding in places that I've never been. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I like did all the protection and um, yeah, just to make it more. You know, because those those bikes are so dirt. Like, there's it's crazy to me. You can slap around the dirt bike mm -hmm. and it just will ride, and it will keep riding. But um, but yeah, you can't like whatever you can do to prevent it. You know, from completely failing you on the trail. Uh, yeah, is, is totally you know cool with me and spending that money to you know prevent that kind of stuff. Armored, you kind of armored it out a lot. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, like. What else? What else we got? I don't. Know. I would. I would say me learning now, like going on trips now, is like taking it slow. Like I'm okay with that now, because before I would like I need to keep up, or I need to be first there, or I need to, like let's send it. You know, I would always be like, yeah. let's just send it. And now I'm like, I'm over it. I'm gonna go slow, and like let's just say that river crossing I was telling you about. That's another story of like. I was just in the in the moment, like yeah. all this adrenaline and and um, and just not taking the time and really thinking about where I was going first and just going. And I put myself in a really dangerous scenario there where I could have just opened the truck, put it in park, walked out, saw, let you go, which you did. Yeah. 
take your time on the radio. You say, don't do it. And then I'm like, okay, fine. Or just being like, <laughs> maybe, what, maybe there's another way around it, you know? Yeah. But instead I just did it. And like, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not saying like I could have really hurt myself, but I could have really, really damaged the truck. Yeah. And that would have been worth it. And we for were that. very far. Yeah. Very far and very remote. And so doing stuff like that, I think it's definitely taught me to, it's okay to go slower and not be the, the freaking little sender on the trip. Like I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's worth it. We put, we, we spend so much money on this shit. It's like, don't do it. Why? Just go slow. Yeah. Let someone else do it. Yeah. I mean, it was, and fun. I, I literally was like, uh, I, like I tried to, <laughs> as quickly as possible to tell them not to do it. And, um, and yeah and i but, did it i didn't yeah. have the oh i remember i didn't have the walkie it was yeah i mean you either didn't see or hear or whatever but, but yeah, yeah that adrenaline and i think i would do i and that's just in life dude that was that's been totally my mentality of just like whoa and just like going, going for, for it. it yeah and then it, something happens i'm like damn i should have really thought that one through yeah but that's just <laughs> I mean, what that's you why do? you bring me though because it's always entertainment yeah there you go that's a good it's a good reason <laughs> yeah no yeah go slow you don't have to be don't you have to be the hero on the trip also it's kind of weird when those guys always like their show offs in the crew yeah i'm not I'm not a, i'm not feeling that I, I i'm like so cautious with my sit yeah it's you like, are. i just don't want to i'm not like rich it's where i could just fix things like right on the spot so i try to be as cautious as possible and and uh yeah avoid toes yeah avoid toes and uh avoid damages yeah so that's that's another that's a good one just taking it slow and, and it, uh, knowing your limits on that stuff like if you want to like do rock crawling and all that stuff man i would just build a like a beater oh big that. time rock crawling is gnarly or not even rock crawling just like something that where you can send it and you wouldn't feel as bad like yeah. you can't you can't do that I, I just, I couldn't do that to a brand new truck. Like, mine. no, that'd be really not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be scary. Yeah. Like the shit box mentality, right? You buy like the shit boxes. And yeah. You, like that, I would, them and totally, I would be super down to build one of those, mm -hmm. but everything's so expensive right now. So it's not a good time. Yeah. Next Let me hear year. something else, dude. Give me another one. I'm, I'm, I got, I'm tapped out. You're tapped out. It's just like my things are so repetitive it's it's always leaving something it's always like oh it's really just it's mostly forgetful stuff yeah yeah it really is because like not forgetting or uh not remembering a pillow like things like that yeah where they're so small but then they like they get they aggravate you and then you have to go to walmart and buy a pillow and like <laughs> I've done you know that what i mean before too <laughs> totally <laughs> that's like typical shit huh yeah but yeah. like, I think over just every trip, I'm like learning, you know, each thing. It's like even um, even the truck build now. I'm like, damn, I you know, if I was gonna do this over, I'd probably just do a a sliding camper and a, and a and a twenty five hundred mm -hmm. because because like it it for me, it's not even really about the build outs or anything. It's just being comfortable. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, like uh, my my favorite build right now is is Corey's like Overland Dad's uh, tr uh, Tremor with the Campex and and the tray. That'd be your favorite right now. Yeah, really? Just because of like it might not it like looks cool and all, but and it's not like it's like super fancy or anything. Uh huh. But it's it's just like the functionality to me is just like so Everything. much more like so much more. Um, uh, like i would i would prefer that over like something crazy like some kind of like long travel raptor or something oh big like time that. yeah and that's it's been interesting to see him do that and then now i feel like i've been like kind of gravitating towards those builds so like his build well, is I, one i found that that f-250 i found you is i know like you know G1. john one remember the one john burt i was telling you about that one guy with the f-250 or 350 yeah. or whatever he, that's the same that truck that he has, but oh. he has one of the over over cab campers. He has the Camp X. Yeah, he, does he have a Camp X? I think they they all have Camp X. Yeah, and then but yeah, seeing um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, go for dirt on Instagram. Seeing his bill with the nine oh, nine, with nine lights or something like that on the Tundra, I was like, those bills are just so. 
they're big, but man, they're just so functional, dude. Yeah. I mean, down the street on your, on your you own saw street, that? there's like a, yeah, big uh, Lance camper with the like F-350 or something. Yeah. It's fucking like, it's sick. Like I, 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 uh, I'll take comfort over anything right now Yeah, at this point. That's a very, um, that's, that's a very old, maximalist person thing. Yeah. But it's a, the maximalist mindset. Yeah, versus like, the minimalist li- mindset. Yeah, and I, I, I think someone asked me if on YouTube, in a comment like, "Could you live out of my tr- like build?" And I was like, "No," because nah. it's like if I was like twenty, maybe, and if I if I was like um, single and you know was just wandering around, yeah, probably it it probably would be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like with me and the dog and cat, and like it's just not that. Pff- it's not happening. No. Nah. Long I'll, trips, sure. Like lo- long trips. Yes. Like month or whatever. Sure. But like full time? No. There's no way. You do. You need a home base. You need a home base with like that the computer you have where you're, where you're doing your DaVinci edits and you're doing all this shit. Like you need yeah. that. I mean, yeah. And it's just, it's not even, it's, it's more of like comfort too. Like sitting on plywood. <laughs> Mm, I don't think so. I, I, I could easily get like pads made or whatever to make some, but like, yeah, like there's no way I'm sitting on like that hard plywood, plywood all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I feel you on that. And you can't have like the bed deployed at the same time as like working on the desk part. Mm-mm. Well, you can, but it's really cramped. Um, but like, yeah, there's little things that definitely you would have to be aware of if you have multiple, if you have more than one person, yeah, that, that is if you're by yourself, then that's a different story. Yeah. The, um, the super Pacific is pretty dialed. I would say just say it's like dialed for like a road trip and camper though. Even like a, any of the other camper companies, like, yeah, like I, I, you know, it's, that's awesome for, for like majority of what I do. Yeah. But like, if I was going to do it again, I would just do it where it's future proof Yeah, and just have a nice camper. <laughs> have <laughs> a, have a six figure truck. Well, yeah, that's the other issue of it God, all is so, so expensive. expensive dude. I mean, but, you're, you're spending what probably like, I mean, shit, if you get like a used, uh, you know, cheaper 2,500, like a fifth gen still, it's like 60,000, let's say. And then you're, and then you're at least like 40 to 50,000 on a camper and a tray plus labor or like with labor maybe. So you're looking at six figures for you on a used truck. You think six, you said 60 K for a fifth gen. Yeah. Right now for, for the, like a, like a 2019 or 2020, um, Oh, I'm sorry. 2500. I was thinking backwards. Yeah, you're you're 100 right. Those shits like a, a 2500 fifth gen with like low mileage is running you for sure in like the upper 40s, 50s right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't. I think the market right depends now depends on what you, what packages and stuff you get. But yeah. yeah, how ridiculous is? I'm so over this. The market's insane. It makes me think about selling my truck all the time. Yeah, but, but I, I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to. Um, but if someone offered me like. The right top amount. top dollar for it yeah i mean if someone offered me like a like a legit offer i i would have to take it yeah because um i mean it's just like i mean like why why not there's and there's used cars on the market that are just <coughs> from seller just you know sold by the seller oh, uh, yeah. or the owner that you can still get a good deal on yeah i'm just i'm i'm pretty <laughs> over it the market right now is stupid i mean for everything for and I think it's going to correct itself. I was reading an article the other day on CNN and it was uh, just talking about how it's essentially just like a steel, like especially the steel market, it's just a bubble and it's going to burst soon. Yeah. But the damage to that is right now there's such a high demand, but it's a pretty normal demand. But right now it's considered high because there's such a, a low shortage of supply. Yeah. It's that like when, housing and stuff. When it catches up, it's going to correct itself, but then it's going to overcorrect itself, just fucking dumping the stop, stock market on steel and like, yeah. But at, at, at I mean, this look rate, at fucking crypto, it's like, <laughs> it's taking a dive, right? Diving so hard. Yeah. It's crazy. Shit. It's a good time to buy though. Yeah. I would say give it another week or so. <laughs> it's a bad time to build shit. AK yeah. too. <laughs> shit's so expensive it's crazy yeah Um, but like what's cool i mean like what's good for people that aren't in 
in the market now or maybe next year, it's like things are going to be really cheap. Yeah. I'm, assu- I'm assuming when that bubble bursts. If you can weather, the, that's a good everyone says. If you can weather the storm of like a weird market and still, like all the all the sprinter vans. Oh, that shit must be so expensive to build out right now with all the lumber and steel and aluminum and stuff. But I think even like when people, so people like on the way here, come from Pasadena, there was so much fucking traffic going into the into LA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, damn, people are you know they're back to normal, like commuting, commuting, and going back to work and all that stuff, and and uh, all these people that bought Sprinter vans and all that, all, you know, to like work damn. off off grid and like or on the road or whatever, like they're gonna have to unload those those vehicles at some point. Yeah. Uh, maybe not everyone, but you know, I yeah. definitely think there's going to be at some point um, some like these some of these vehicles, these like really expensive vehicles that are going to have to go for cheap, or that because they're going to have to unload them. That's at, a, at some point, you know, at somehow. That was um, that was the market for for RVs and motorhomes and trailers. I would say, give it this time, like ten years ago, you could they were giving those things away. Like you'd go to yeah. RV dealerships and they'd be just trying to unload their inventory. And then when the height of COVID, they couldn't even keep their inventory because yeah. people wanted RV so bad. But then it's like... And it's going to go back to normal because who the fuck wants to... I don't want to drive well, a big ass RV. Well, who's going to... Who can afford to keep one and, you know, not use it? Yeah, that's... I think that's why people get rid of it. They use it for like 15 times, 20 times. Yeah. And they unload it to the use lot, you know? Yeah, and then you can buy it cheap. Crazy. I mean, either way, you're buying it cheaper than new, no matter what. I just Anything. think that you got to wait um, till you know the that bubble burst, and then I don't know, yeah. scoop up on it. Yeah, damn, we digressed pretty hard on that one, yeah. but I think it's, it's okay. uh that's part of it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's stuff. uh, I think that's why, like, going back to like the RVs. Okay, there's a bunch. I mean, we touched on so many topics, but. Um, knowing before you go, knowing your limits, going on these certain trips and knowing what to buy after like stuff goes wrong, then you know what to get. But I think touching on that, knowing before you go. Um, yeah, I mean, we talk about it every time, but dude, on X, just, if you want to know weather, you go obviously and look up weather. If you want to know about (laughs) trails, right. You, if you want to know about trails and closures, yeah, go to Onyx maps and that's the easiest way. Cause they'll give you, don't they give you closures? I right. think, uh, yeah, you can check that stuff. And I mean, at least it links you to the forest service or whoever that manages that, that property. They'll give you updates of just like knowing where not to go to. Cause the last thing you want to do, and I've heard some horror stories is, uh, as a buddy of mine, they just, they use this other app and they ended up on someone's private property and they were just like literally held at yeah. gunpoint. It was crazy. That's crazy. Like it was a son and a dad with shotguns, like what you doing on my property? And like, dude, <laughs> we're using this app. And I asked him like, were you using Onyx? And he was like, no. And I'm like, well, there you go. Don't yeah. be using some jank app. Like use Onyx, know where you're going at all times. With the um, with the Elite membership, you can actually, it tells you the properties, um, like owners. Really? Yeah, and the names. So if you ever wanted to like, I don't know, like contact them in some way or whatever, you might, you know, you might be able to like look it up in public records or whatever. That's crazy. Um, I saw, watched a YouTube video of, uh, of someone... I don't know how he got the information, but he, they do, they do like helicopter trips uh-huh. and, um, he f- somehow found the public record of whoever the, owns this land and, um, and then contacted them like cold call and everything. And was what like, can do? we land on your property? And he was like, yeah. And so they landed on their property and then went to this like sick Airbnb. What? Yeah. That's weird. baller. But yeah, um, anyways, uh, yeah, but Onyx it was like the elite membership at least, um, shows you like all the, all the information for sure. No, before you go and the weather, the weather aspect works so well. Like, uh, I know before it was like you, you would just look up the city uh huh, and then it would just give, and then you would just get like the general, you know, weather of that area. But on Onyx, it will actually pull at the from the closest like oh. uh weather rate or weather tower or whatever it's called um, yeah to that pin and then it will give you a more a slightly better probably um weather cr- uh, like you know prediction yeah so nice yeah. there you go i did not even know that 
Well, Learn something new every day. No, before you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it, guys. There's a little bit of a long one, more of a tangent. But if you guys have any ideas, I do want to do a and a again. I think that was really fun yeah. and organic. So we'll toss it up on both of our stories. Hit us some with some good questions and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll answer those. See you so, guys on the next one. Next one, guys. Thank you.